What's up, everybody? It's Yeon Cure with a Metal Gear Solid 5 news update. Finally, actual information about the game rather than bad or speculative news. The following information comes from just about every major media outlet that has been invited by Konami to an event in Los Angeles called MGS5 Preview, during which they are given a chance to play hours worth of Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. They can't talk about their full impressions now, but the embargo will lift on June 9th, so expect a flood of Metal Gear Solid V impressions and articles then. Fortunately, there have been some bits of new information revealed here and there through tweets, so I've gone ahead and compiled all the information here. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. So what I'm going to do is go through Twitter users in alphabetical order and share their impressions, starting with Agere Gere, who works for a website Cole Mono. His tweets were in Spanish, but fortunately I speak fluent Spanish. Let's begin by taking a look at his first tweet. MGS5 cambia muchas cosas de la franquicia, pero lo interesante es que la base de lo que conocemos se encuentra todavía ahí. This can be translated as MGS5 changes many things in the franchise, but what's interesting is that the base that we know is still there. Next up is evolucionar en torno a la base es lo que define MGS5, que es lo que generalmente comentamos en los podcasts. Which means evolving the base is what defines MGS5, which is what we commented in the podcasts. Then we have llevo ocho horas jugadas de MGS5 y no debo llevar ni un cuarto. Ahora me viro a seguir dándole que está re bueno. Which means I have played eight hours of MGS5 and I haven't even reached a quarter. Now I'm going to keep going. It's very good. His final tweet simply states that he can't say much else until June 9th, which is when the embargo lifts. Our next user is Bruno Silva, whose tweets are in Portuguese. I cannot speak Portuguese, but it's similar enough to Spanish that I can make out a good portion of them. Combine that with Google Translate, and I believe I can accurately translate his tweets. His first tweet can be translated as follows. I have played eight hours of Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain yesterday, and I'll play eight more today. Wow. He then followed up with, The game is huge. I haven't even passed the first area. His final tweet talks about Motherbase, stating the following. Motherbase is very well integrated into the game's progress. You need it to advance, but you don't feel obligated to build it. Our next Twitter user is Caleb Lawson, who works for a website IGN. For his first tweet, he talked about how he played 7 hours of MGS5 yesterday, and that the game feels like the giant open map Peace Walker sequel we've been promised. Those 7 hours put him only 10 episodes into Chapter 1 of MGS5, and this was while forcing himself to ignore Mother Base because there was just so much to do. It looks like MGS5 will be divided into acts or chapters like MGS4 and MGS Peace Walker, with each of them featuring subcategories called episodes, which goes in line with what Kojima has said before about making making MGS5 feel less like a movie and more like a long-running TV show. Caleb then addressed MGS5's graphics, stating that anyone concerned about an MGS5 graphical downgrade should probably go play Ground Zeroes. Next up is David Roberts from GamesRadar. He played the game for about 8 hours and described the game as Peace Walker blown out to huge open world proportions. He managed to get up to Mission 8, which involves finding a colonel and his accompanying tank squad and blow up the tanks. To do so, he needs to find some intel. He also talks about how he needs to recruit soldiers using the Fulton recovery system to research a new rocket launcher, which seems to go in line with the R&D mechanics found in Peace Walker. He does mention that another way to blow the tanks up is by using C4, which is yet another piece of proof that MGS5 will allow players to get creative with how they tackle missions. Next up is Derek J. Lang, who didn't have much to say. In his tweets, he talks about how he marveled at the little details that the game had to offer, like overhearing Kim Wilde's song, Kids in America, on a boombox. I'm guessing that like in Ground Zeroes, players can set choppers to play certain tunes. Or hell, maybe players can add boomboxes throughout Mother Base and play tunes back home. Now, Derek did show some concern for the game, wondering if the open world Afghanistan will be dynamic enough to sustain a whole game. That's definitely a valid concern, but something he has to keep in mind is that the game will feature many locales like Africa and Cyprus. Our next Twitter user, Gao Jing, also had little to say about the game, simply stating that in 10 hours he escaped, rode, learned, slept, rode, snuck, ran, saved, drove, shot, and rushed to Mission 13. Also, he loved it. 
Next up is none other than Greg Miller, former IGN editor and now a founding member of Kinda Funny Games. He'll be giving his full impressions once the embargo is lifted. But for now, all he had to say was that mechanically, MGS5 The Phantom Pain is basically open world Peace Walker 2. He's been playing since yesterday and he doesn't want to stop. Moving on, we have Joe McAllister, who had the following to say. I can confirm that Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain is expansive, beautiful, and a seriously deep game. Almost too much to do, but not overwhelming. Been able to get mauled by a bear, recruit a decent sized PMC, and punch nearly everything. Also dropped a crate on my horse and myself, which deserves its own trophy. Currently tasked with taking out three unit commanders holding a meeting. Question is how quiet can I be until I find out how loud I can be? His tweets continued on with the following. You know those games you put down then immediately want to jump back in? Got that feeling with MGS5 The Phantom Pain for sure. He then proceeded by providing some details about the environment and level design, stating that at certain points they are straight up photorealistic, with the music and sound always being on point. He also talked about how the iDroid warned him of clouds approaching as he moved towards the objective. For his final tweet, he expressed how lost he is in the game, while also declaring war on the bear that mauled him. I truly wonder what other animals we'll see in the game. So far, we have animals like sheep, goats, wolves, and bears, to name a few. These next few tweets come from Jorge Arellano, who hails from Mexico. These tweets are also in Spanish, and this user probably had the most to say about the game, so bear with me. He begins by stating that he's played 9 hours of the game and has reached mission 10. He can't talk too much about the game, but he does provide some brief impressions. He begins by talking about mission 6, which involved infiltrating a fort to recover a weapon. So for those who worried about Metal Gear Solid 5 being purely exterior infiltration, there you have it. The the game will feature interior environments like forts and bases to infiltrate. He first tried to complete mission 6 during the day, but the enemies have very good vision. At night it was more difficult to be detected, but there were more guards. He then talked about how incredible the game looks. He talked about little details like how Snake's eyes and in turn the player's eyes have to adjust if they go from a dark room and then go out to broad daylight, and same when he gets out from the sun to a dark room. He then talks about the game's controls, stating that they are more polished than Ground Zero's, the best MGS controls ever, he says. He also states that it feels as though you have a lot of tools for infiltration. He then proceeded by answering some fan questions. When one user asked how the game felt, he replied that it feels very organic. Another user asked how the game controls compared to Ground Zero's and he said that Phantom Pain is an improved version. As players have more resources, there is more variety in level design, more tools and more movement options. Then when asked about the technical aspects of Phantom Pain, he said that it's technically impeccable. Another user inquired about the game's difficulty and AI, to which he replied that it's difficult to get used to having so much freedom. The AI is always ready and it doesn't forgive players who don't play carefully. He was then asked about the game's resolution, to which he replied that it seems to run at 1080p. He was likely playing on the PS4 version, if we go by other sources. He then makes a few more statements about the game, talking about how generally MGS5 feels like the culmination of ideas that Kojima has spread out over the previous games, as if MGS has always wanted to be Phantom Pain. The open world makes all the difference, he says. He then tweeted something peculiar. He first said that on June 9th, the embargo was lifted for gameplay impressions, but then he says, Les adelanto que algunas cosas no las van a creer, which translates to, I warn you that some things you are not going to believe. Not exactly sure what he means by that, and he didn't elaborate, but I guess we'll find out on June 9th. He then proceeded by answering a few more questions. One user asked how the Fulton system was like, to which Jorge replied that it's super important for the game. He did state that players must be careful when using it, as they can alert enemies. The next question asked about the game's mission structure. Will they be open or will players have to go back to Mother Base every time? The answer to that was the flow of missions is very free. The dynamic is very organic. You can go back to Mother Base whenever you want. In other words, the game will likely feel like an open world RPG in that players can receive missions on the spot in the world itself rather than having to choose from some list in some main menu like in Ground Zeroes. Then when asked if Jorge thought Phantom Pain was the best in the franchise, he replied with, It's hard to say, but what I played had me enchanted. 
Another fan expressed concerns about level design, wondering if the open world sacrifices level design. He also asked if the world is all open or if there are zones like in MGS2's Big Shell. Jorge simply replied that the levels are all very well designed and that the open and free nature of the games make it more difficult to find the right way to tackle a mission. When another fan asked if the world really is open, he confirmed that yes, the world is indeed fully open. The next fan question asked about the variety of weapons in Phantom Pain and how Snake controls, to which Jorge replied that there are a ton of weapons, but players will first have to develop them in Mother Base. He also reiterated that Snake controls great. The topic then shifted back to the open world nature of the game, with a user asking if MGS5's world is comparable to GTA. Jorge replied yes, but also stated to keep in mind that Afghanistan isn't a city, it's an entire country. Jorge then talked a bit about money. He stated that each mission will yield money for players, but how much money you gain also takes into account how much you use during the mission. If you ask too much help from Mother Base, it's possible to lose valuable resources. He was then asked about climate changes and phantom pain, to which he replied that so far he has only seen sandstorms, reiterating that the climate can affect the success rate of Fulton Extraction. The topic then shifted back to mission structure, about which he had the following to say. About the missions, you are given a list of them and side ops. You can do them whenever you want, out of order. Unfortunately, he didn't elaborate on how the list of missions is shown, but he has already confirmed that there is no need to go back to Mother Base to tackle missions, so I'm going to assume that the list of missions can be viewed on the iDroid, almost like a quest log. Jorge was then asked about how his experience with this game differs from previous entries in the Metal Gear franchise, to which he replied that the open world as well as the day and night cycle completely changes the way players have to approach infiltration. Jorge then provided a few more final details. First, he talked about how Snake will be splattered with blood during missions. Now, what's interesting is that the blood doesn't disappear with time. Players have to go to Mother Base and take a shower to remove the blood from Snake. Little details like these is what Kojima is known for. To close off his tweets about the Metal Gear Solid 5 preview event, Jorge stated that the binoculars are vital and emphasized the importance of marking enemies. He also noted that you can mark enemies during the day and then come back at night and find the marks still in place. Whew, that was a ton of new info. Thank you, Jorge, for your work. Our next Twitter user is Jose Otero, another IGN editor. He played eight hours yesterday, and in that time, he managed to complete six missions. The way he described the game is, if MGS4 Act 1 and Peace Walker had a baby, it would be MGS5. Huge spaces to explore, lots of resources to develop. The next Twitter user we'll be looking at is JunkerHQ, who kindly took the time to translate information from some of the Japanese press present during the event. One of his first tweets reiterates the dynamic nature of the mission structure. You can do a side op, then another, then a main mission without returning to Mother Base. Also, apparently, the impression is that despite concerns, MGS5 is still a Kojima game through and through, right down to the humor. Moving on, let's take a look at tweets from Matthew Cato from Game Informer who has been playing through MGS5, diving deep into Afghanistan and building Mother Base. One of his first tweets states that he's got his trusty horse in her battle dress and stomping through the Afghan mountains. This is further confirmation that support bodies can be customized and fitted with equipment. His next tweet talks about how he is mid-mission, trying to locate something called the Honeybee Weapon. Not exactly sure what a honeybee weapon is, but if you have an idea, let us know in the comments below, although it does make me think of the pain and his form of attack. This weapon is also mentioned by other Twitter users, which I'll talk about later on. Matthew's tweet also talks about having to take care of a Soviet relay station, which requires some intel first. Fortunately for him, the task was made much easier thanks to a spontaneous dust storm that covered up his entrance. He then resorted to using an anti-aircraft gun against them. He then shared a few more minor details of his experiences with the game, talking about how the cover of the night is the perfect way to walk away from disaster, how he narrowly avoided an enemy helicopter while on horseback, how he heard a puppy yelp but couldn't find it to return to Mother Base, and finally how he arrived at Smase Fort to find this honeybee weapon. Now, I find it interesting that he heard the puppy in Afghanistan rather than Africa. This has me thinking that perhaps Dee Dee can be a number of different breeds depending on where players find the puppy. Or perhaps Dee Dee is set to a specific breed, but he can be found on various locations, which would go in line with what Kojima stated about each player having a different experience with MGS5. Matthew's string of tweets concluded with, Wide open canyon, Soviets everywhere, hostage, this is going to be difficult. 
I think it's very cool that Afghanistan features a canyon. That must be one hell of a sight on the Fox engine. For our next Twitter user, we have Miguel Asher, another Spanish-speaking source. He too had a lot to say about the game, so brace yourselves. He begins by stating that he has played 8 hours of the game, stating that this Metal Gear feels very distinct based on what he has played. He then states that Mother Base is incredible, and that when he's in the battlefield, he wants to Fulton everything in his way like the hoarder he is. He then talks about the scale of Phantom Pain, stating that it's like having a thousand Ground Zeroes playgrounds. There is so much to do that it burdens him. His favorite thing about Phantom Pain is that the flow of each mission is distinct, organic, and the soldiers are no longer robots. He also talks about preference between infiltrating during the day or at night. He recommended the darkness for infiltration, but you can barely see anything at night, so there are those who might prefer the day. He then proceeded by reiterating the game's recruiting mechanics. All soldiers that are taken to Mother Base have distinct skills, and depending on their development, players can obtain more toys, which include the ability to improve the Fulton recovery system to carry more things, improve the iDroid, and unlock uniforms and weapons. He will provide full details of his impressions on June 9th, like everyone else, but from what he has played, Miguel states that Metal Gear Solid 5 is already a contender for Game of the Year. Miguel finishes his strings of tweets by stating that there's nothing like the adrenaline of having your own way in Phantom Pain's missions. No scripts, pure gameplay. In the past, Metal Gear games were mostly hallways or isolated zones, but Phantom Pain's approach is to allow players to go whenever they want, as loud or as quiet as they want. You still with me? Okay. Next up is Peter Brown was an editor for GameSpot who played the game for 7 hours. The mission he talked about is Mission 6, which Twitter user George talked about. This mission involved looking for a secret weapon in the caves of Afghanistan. He stated that needless to say, Afghanistan by itself is far larger than all of Ground Zeroes, and when he feels like he's growing tired of the desert environment, he would discover a new locale tucked away that brightened him up. During his playthrough, he Fulton rescued people, supplies, and a massive bear. So it looks like you really can Fulton any animal you encounter. Something that Kojima has stated before is that players can Fulton drop wild animals in the middle of the battlefield to cause some chaos, so I'm assuming that the bear will come in handy for that. Apparently the bear was very challenging to take down, taking 10 Trank darts to subdue it. Now here is where things get interesting. Peter Brown then began talking about mysterious super soldiers that he discovered during the mission. Apparently they are called the Skulls, and they are very fast, clearly biomechanical in nature. I bet he's talking about none other than the super soldiers we saw in the E3 2013 trailer. He didn't go into much more detail unfortunately, so it's hard to say if they were bosses or sub-bosses, or if they are stronger enemy NPCs, but I guess we'll find out when the embargo is lifted. Also, the name Skulls has me thinking that these super soldiers might be associated with Skullface. Anyway, Peter then proceeded by talking about the day and night cycle, talking about how great it was and how big of a part it plays in strategizing. He also called the Phantom Cigar weird. The topic then shifted back to the mission. Peter detailed how the mission to find the weapon took him through massive military installations tucked away in the desert. This is probably the military fort that Jorge was talking about. The scale of them is daunting, he says, so it looks like we will not only be infiltrating interior environments, but these interiors can also be massive in scale. Awesome sauce. And that's pretty much all he had to say about his time with Metal Gear Solid 5. Like everyone else, he can talk more when the embargo is lifted on June 9th. He did say, however, that by the time he was done with Mission 6, called Where Do The Bees Sleep, he was only 4% done with the game, and that was 7 hours of gameplay. So, yeah, that should give you an idea of just how expansive Phantom Pain really is. Also, based on the name of the mission, I'm assuming that this weapon is indeed none other than the honeybee weapon that Matthew from Game Informer talked about. I'm seriously getting a The Pain vibe here. A honeybee weapon tucked away in a cave? I can't be the only one who thinks this sounds familiar, right? I don't know. Anyway, before we move on to another user, let's take a look at some of the fan questions that Peter Brown answered. The first question he replied to was, if missions he has done so far have been solo, or if he has had any allies or help. His answer was solo, minus the horse. The next question asked about the story and controls, to which Peter replied that he can't talk about the plot, but for him, the controls feel nearly the same as Ground Zero's, if not identical. He then replied to a follow-up question asking what he thought about Kiefer's voice, to which he said that he preferred Kiefer, as fond of he is of David Hayter. Next up, a user asked whether there were any Mujahideen soldiers, to which Peter replied with a simple, yes. 
so it looks like we won't just be encountering Soviet soldiers. And perhaps we will see Metal Gear Solid 4's war mechanic return in some way, shape or form. The topic then shifted back to Kiefer, as Peter was asked how much voice acting there is for Kiefer. Peter replied, not much so far. The next question was simple. Is it fun? The one who asked the question found MGS4 to be a slog. Peter replied he felt the same way, but MGS5 has been a blast thus far. Next, a user asked about the weapon variety and recoil of the game, wondering if they felt meaty. The reply was that there are a lot of weapons at the moment, many with unique characteristics. I'm assuming that one such unique weapon is this honeybee weapon, unless I'm totally misinterpreting what that is. Another user then asked if what he played was an accurate demo to the final product, to which he replied that in terms of mechanics, mostly, but only because there's more to do now. Next up was a question on gameplay approach. Peter stated that Phantom Pain can be tackled stealthily or guns blazing, but stealth is way more stressful and engaging, which he says is a good thing. The final question for Peter asked about how the AI has been. The reply was, a good mix actually. I'm not sure what he means by a good mix. Perhaps he's talking about enemy variety or patterns. All right, let's move on to our next Twitter user, Sexhair, who is an editor for Destructoid. Nice name, by the way. This user played seven hours of Phantom Pain and he talked about what's called Red Brass Mission, which involves assassinating three Soviet officers. But it seems as though they can be Fulton as well, similar to the assassination mission in Ground Zeroes. Sexhair's approach was to Fulton everything at night, and apparently he played naked despite the big arsenal available. Again, further proof that it's up to the players to choose their playstyle. Next up is Twitter user Steve Hask, who only had one tweet to make about MGS5, hanging out with my wolf pup pal on Mother Base. He likes getting his belly scratched. This says two things. One, when players retrieve the wolf puppy, it looks like time won't automatically pass and have the puppy become an adult wolf like the one cutscene from TGS 2014 showed. Players can live out the days until the puppy grows into an adult. Second, players can interact with support buddies, even if they are animals and even if they aren't at a stage where they are ready to be deployed for battle. Hell, players can probably interact with a lot of things in Mother Base, from objects to people. Moving on, we have some tweets from user Wow a Bob Mackie, who played the game for two straight days, with breaks, I hope. He described Phantom Pain as essentially an open world peace walker, basically his dreams come true. All he had to say is that he went for a strictly non-lethal approach, which he found to be pretty damn satisfying. Like everyone else, he'll provide the full scoop on June 9th. Alright folks, we are at the last stretch. Last but not least, let's take a look at tweets from user Zav Dematos from Engadget, who spent 11 hours with the game. He didn't have much to say about MGS5 except the usual, but he did state that a preview of MGO will be coming on June 16th. In other words, the major outlets invited to the MGS5 preview event will also likely be playing MGO3 and sharing their impressions on that game on June 16th. Pretty exciting stuff. To finish this video off, here are a few photos taken from the event. So there you have it folks, every tweet and new information that I gathered from across Twitter and the internet. Thank you for tuning in. If I missed anything, let us know in the comments below and tell us what your thoughts are on MGS5 after hearing these impressions. Also look forward to June 9th, which is when the embargo dam will break and a flood of MGS5 news will drown us. And to be further updated on Metal Gear Solid 5, stay tuned on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.